Yishem Adonam Avroch Matar Adonam Hashem's name will be blessed forever and ever Shalom everybody We're going to continue today with wines fit for Kiddush use We also ask a question that we will answer Be'ezrat Hashem Amen We'll answer Be'ezrat Hashem Later Later The, the question Remember the question I gave you for homework? Yes Go ahead Why is the red wine preferred? Why is the red wine? I you think only were <laughs> well, few gave me an answer, but one was, uh, uh, he was faster, he was the quickest. So, Be'ezrat Hashem, I'm waiting for him to come in so we can share all that. Shalom, shalom. Okay, so anyways, we're going to continue a very interesting halachot. I'm going to share with you also uh, a nice, I think, nice uh, story that just came out to my, uh, to my mind. I remember that. Please, go on, come on in, come on in, have a seat. Unplug it, please. Blood? Yeah, it's supposed to go on. Okay, so remember that we asked, what was the special wine? Or oh, any wine can be used actually for the mitzvah. The thing is, oh, I didn't even start it here. Join with video. This meeting, I don't know the host. I don't understand what's that nonsense. Uh, excuse me, guys, I'm going to have to, because I'm, I'm taking here for the... This is for the uh, Zoom. I have to. Paste. Uh, uh, okay. Okay, I don't know. Okay. So, join with video. Join with video. Ah, okay. All right. Sorry for the delay, guys, on the Zoom. Um, I guess I didn't press the right button. Shalom Aleichem. Anyways, we ask a question. Why we are preferring red wine? One gave me a quick answer, and I will share it in a minute. Let's continue to the next next um, question. Next halacha. To that. So... Someone asked me the other day, Rabbi, I'm, I'm living in America. I live in America, but I live in a place there is no wine. So, what do you mean? You're kidding? What do you mean there's no wine? No wine in America? No, there's no kosher wine. Ah, uh, kosher wine. Okay. What about grape juice? There's a lot of grape juice, but none of it is kosher. I'll go to Walmart because there's no kosher. There's wine, no kosher. Grape juice. Can I use, can I use beer? For Kiddush, or whiskey, no. for Kiddush, or coffee, Beer, yeah. no. No. or tea. No. no. Beer. Uh, beer, not, it's not kosher. Uh, beer is made Let's start talking about beer. kosher beer. So I think you'll be a little bit surprised today. <coughs> the Allah says the following. You need to understand before I uh, continue that okay. we're talking about Kiddush two times on Shabbat, right? We have Kiddush in the evening, Kiddush in the morning. Which one is more significant? Friday night. Friday night Kiddush is more significant, but the Seuda of Shabbat morning more significant than in the evening. Yeah. Kiddush. Kiddush in the evening takes priority. And Shabbat morning takes priority. Meaning, if you have special food that you want to save, you want to use, let's say, for example, fish, save it for the morning. This so is why I see many have the custom. You look familiar. <laughs> How did you let him? <laughs> Do you recognize him? <laughs> <laughs> so, what I was saying? What I was saying? Nobody knows about their food. Oh, the food. <laughs> so, especially salad, fish, and that. Keep, keep for, for, for the morning. Okay, because it's from the right, from the Torah, and the other one is from the Rabbanam, from the rabbinical law. 
So you see many people have the custom to eat fish in the morning uh, versus in the evening. Some have it any meal. You remember we studied it on Shabbat. The significance of eating me, uh, uh, fish. Did we ever discuss that about eating fish on Shabbat? There's three times in the Torah it says when Hashem created the world, Hashem uh, said Vayevarech and Hashem blessed. Hashem blessed. On Thursday, on Friday, and on Shabbat. After he created something, and he says, and Hashem bless. He created, and Hashem bless. Created, and Hashem bless. What are the three things? Fish, on Thursday. He says, Hashem bless the fish. And then he created, who created, who was created on Friday? Human being, humankind, Adam. And Hashem, Hashem says, Hashem blessed him. And on Shabbat, Hashem blessed the Shabbat. We know that it says, V'achut ha-meshulash, and the third string, Lo b'mhera inatek, will not easily depart. Get disconnected. Three together, it means strong, it means strength. So, you see many things in Judaism is three, about three. So on Shabbat, I have the Shabbat itself, is Beracha. The Adam, the person himself, is Beracha. I'm missing one. Fish. So it's customary to bring fish. So now, Beracha on Shabbat. The man has the Beracha and the fish. Three Brachot on Shabbat. The whole week and the whole Shabbat is blessed. It's customary to eat at least in one meal. One meal fish. You don't have fish? Take tuna. Uh, tu tuna is a fish. I mean, the fish that we. Uh, uh, I mean, you forgot. Um, I mean, I meant to say, if you forgot to, to cook or something, take tuna. Sardine. Fish. Okay? So you're bringing to your home a blessing, a special energy. There's a chair over there. A special, unique energy. Using them. This is why the Mekubalim. Uh, you eating fish all three meals you saw probably in many synagogues at the third Sauda they are serving tuna and now you know why so we are in a place that there is no kosher wine and he wants to use beer he says, Rabbi, in this town, I'm telling you, everybody drinks beer. Everybody go to the pub. It's very famous here. Um, can I do Kiddush over a beer? Of course, I'm not going to say, Bore, Bria, Gefen. I'm going to say, Kol, Niyabit, Answer. One, but listen to this. There's two halachot. Don't get confused. One may not recite the Friday evening. Kiddush over another popular alcoholic beverage such as beer. The ruling of the Shulchan Aruch is that if one has no wine, one should recite the Kiddush over bread. Regarding the daytime Kiddush, however, one may substitute beer or another popular alcoholic beverage if there is no wine. If there is no, if there is, of course, it's no question. It doesn't matter now the color. Use what you have. You don't have, use any other alcohol, vodka, aranis, whatever. <coughs> aranis, aranis. Oh, I'm out, I'm out. I'm again. Coming back from commercial, one way. One may substitute beer or another popular alcoholic beverage if there is no wine. This is because if one would recite a daytime kiddush over bread, it will not be recognized that one is reciting kiddush at all, since the basic kiddush will consist merely of a blessing of a moti. 
for every time one eats bread during the weekdays or on Shabbat, one must recite the blessing of Hamotzi. Hamotzi lechem inares. Okay. Therefore, if one has no wine, one should recite Kiddush over beer or another popular alcoholic beverage. Someone said, Rabbi, you know what? In this town, the very common drink, beverage, is coffee or tea. There's some opinion, a great rabbi that holds, that they, they may do Kiddush over the most popular beverage in case you don't have wine, which means coffee or tea. It's the opinion of the minority, and this is not what we are actually practicing. If there is no alcoholic beverage, you do the Kiddush over the bread, meaning you are t you're looking at the bread, you're saying that the Kiddush, and there is no Bore Peria Geffen uh, recited. Sorry, question? How about soda? Same. Same. It's not alcoholic? No. It has to be something a little bit special, something that gives you joy. Okay. About water, uh, it could be a soda with alcohol. It could be soda with alcohol. That mixed with alcohol, it's fine. Um, all opinions agree that water is not uh, can be, cannot be used for kiddush. So listen, we're living in a special place. Everybody here, I don't know, vegetarian or whatever. We only drink water here. So the common drink here is water. Still. It has to be a special drink. Okay. What if someone says, Rabbi, I tell you the truth. We have wine. A bottle of wine costs $50 and a beer costs me $5. It's so 10 times more. Can I use beer? There is, there is wine, but it costs 10 times more. But you will get 10 times more. Okay. So that's what you're going to tell them. Do it and Hashem will give you ten times more. The halacha is that if that one may recite daytime kiddush over beer only when there is no wine available in the city. This is the ruling of the Shulchan Aruch. If there is a wine available but it's very expensive one must still use wine and not beer. Those people who recited daytime kiddush over beer or another alcoholic beverage just because wine, although available, is more expensive or because they prefer the flavor of beer are conducting themselves incorrectly. One may use beer or another popular alcoholic beverage only if there is no wine available in the city or if wine is uh, uh, injurious to one's health, right? Injurious. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, yes. So you, yeah. So sometimes the, the halacha is very uh, strict. It'll tell you, go sell you. Let's go put your jacket in the pawn shop, get from the money, and buy candles for Shabbat. Or buy candles for Hanukkah. Sometimes to teach the people, go ahead and find a job. <laughs> <laughs> Work! You have to provide yourself. That's right. That's true. You cannot buy anything you don't. Right? Right? Questions? I have a question. Go ahead. I just want to clarify. So uh, on Shabbat evening, on Friday, you, can, you only have to use wine. But on like, Yiddish Shabbat, on Saturday, you can use other alcoholic beverages, is that correct? It's correct, but we prefer to use at all time wine. Right. Only in case, uh, so on Shabbat morning you may, you may. But well, wine is required for all meals. But Friday you can't use, you only have to no, use wine. No, wine. Yeah, okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah. Now, with that being said, if you do use another alcoholic beverage, do you have to pour the same amount or can you dilute it with water? If you the yeah. other the other use whiskey and the, the ingredients yeah. of whiskey mixing is it. Well, a lot. <laughs> okay, we'll get to it in a minute. How much you need to drink? A, a sip is enough. The problem starts with the one that makes the kiddush. One that makes the kiddush, he needs to drink something we called melo lugmav, 
full of his full of the chick what does that mean if I want to measure it how much is it what's the amount we'll see it in a second the one that said the beracha, at least he, he needs to drink that much. Okay? Rather than just taking a small sip. You can't let someone else do it. It's important that you drink that amount. We'll see in a minute. Now, listen to this. Someone is doing a kiddush over a whiskey or, or, or arak. Or anise, whatever, it's, it's spicy, it's, 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 uh, it's very strong, it's 40% an app. Versus wine that can be 9, 10, 15, 12. This is, you know everybody what I'm talking about, right? So, <laughs> what do you expect me to, how much do you expect me to drink? Even if one uses a very strong beverage, such as Arak, one must drink at least Melo Lugumav. What is Melolugmav? The amount is, just so you know, Revi'it. What's Revi'it? Revi'it is the minimum required to drink so you can say Baha. Revi'it, one fourth. It means in, in uh, around 80, there's a debate, 80 cc, 86 cc, let's say around 80 cc, which is around a little bit less than three ounces. It's 2.7 point something or 2.8 ounce. Okay, it's very little. It's not much if you think about it. But it depends who, who said the Kiddush. Big guy, small guy. A child, a woman. Everybody has a different way to measure it. So you have to have, you have to agree on a number. In order to fulfill the mitzvah, you must drink at least rov, how should you say rov, rov revi'it, uh, um, a little bit more than a half of it, which means 1.4 ounce, okay? Let's say 45 cc. 1.4 ounce will be enough. It's enough to put enough liquid in one side and move it to the other side. The rabbi is trying to help us to calculate because everybody you know, people on their table, and they're not using calculator. You need to measure with your own eyes. You have to feel the situation. You are the judge now. So this is the amount one, one wants uh, have to drink. So in order to fulfill the mitzvah, he needs to drink milolugmav to fulfill the mitzvah. The cup used must hold at least revi'it of the beverage. You can't do kiddush over a small tiny cup. If they call it uh, one shot whis whiskey. I don't think they have three ounce. It needs to be measured. I don't know. But there's, there, are, there are cups that are very small. They look big, but they're very thick at the bottom. They're tricking you. You think you're drinking a lot. The shot glass. Yeah, they're tricking you. You, th you see a long glass, but actually it doesn't hold too much. In, in, in the industry out there, they're tricking us all the time. You should know it. Someone sent me the other day a video of someone, I think it's from McDonald's, I don't, I don't want to be sued, but uh, it's from, um, I don't know, it was one of the burgers uh, that he, he ordered three cups, three sizes. The re the, oh, you saw it? Uh -huh. The small, the average, and the big. And he's pouring to this, all the, 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 the tall one, all the way to the top. How is it possible? So, so I said to this guy, nah, he's, there's a trick here, he's a magician. So I said, no, there's... Hundreds of videos like this, different places. But you're paying for the big cup more. We actually get as much as you pay for this. They're tricking us all the time. It's all about the packages. Okay? It is. In principle, when one drinks revi'it of beverage, one must recite a blessing afterwards. In practice, however, it's not in, in, in Kiddush now, I'm talking about regular day. In practice, however, if one drinks a revi'it of arak, that's the amount that we said from one side, that's less than three ounces, or some other very strong beverage is in, uh, in one shot, one may not recite any blessing afterward, 
since it is possible that this is not considered a normal manner of drinking. Very few people enjoy drinking strong beverage like, uh, like that in one shot. You see, usually, you know, we've learned that everything we eat, we say bracha before, we say bracha after. A certain food and drinks that we don't say bracha after. Either it's too hot, too cold, or too strong. Ice cream, before shakol, after nothing. Soup, before shakol, after nothing. Because you, you drink it, you, you sip it. Right? How did you, how did you drink whiskey? You take his game and you take small tiny sips. Usually people don't drink one shot yeah. three ounces. Even if they do drink one shot, it's less than that. You, you, you give it a No? So so questions. Okay. You know, we try to uh, always honor the Shabbat and respect the Shabbat with many ways. There's a, there's a story about a miller. You know about the miller? You know at the uh, Grits Mill, the place that they grounded seeds to make flour. It's called Grits Mill, no? Grits Mill. Grits, Grits. Okay, G R. I S T mill. It's one word. So in uh, the grist mill, usually in Poland, 150 years ago, it was the Paritz, a landlord. He would rent to the guy the grist mill and he would pay in percentage. So we had a Frum guy. A religious guy that one day he um, started to do Kiddush in the middle of the Kiddush he goes like that sleeping fell asleep and the family is looking at him he's going, no, what happened Shh. maybe he's not feeling well let him let him rest for a few minutes and he's, he didn't wake up. So, Abba, Abba, what's going on? Oh, I'm sorry. Wake him up. He started the Kiddush. Next Shabbat, next Friday, again. And again, and again. He keep falling asleep. Just start to say, Yo, ma shishi, <laughs> so something here is wrong. He drove all the way to his rabbi in Zichlin. Zichlin, a place in Poland. His rabbi, the, the chief rabbi of Zichlin was Rabbi Shmuel Abba. He's a great tzaddik. He told him, Rabbi, I don't know what I, there's something going on here. I'm awake the whole year. Every day, every evening. Before Shabbat, I fell asleep. I'm studying Kiddush, I fell asleep. It happens to me more than three, four, five times. I wouldn't come here uh, I'm bothering you with that with, for no reason. <laughs> so the rabbi look at him and says, because uh, you don't keep Shabbat. <laughs> Next! This guy is wandering out. Uh, outside and says, what do you mean? The rabbi told me I don't keep Shabbat. I'm very strict about the law of Shabbat. I'm teaching people, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, uh, I'm teaching my family, I'm answering questions to people. What do you mean I don't keep Shabbat? The, uh, he went back home and the family looked at him, he's very sad. What's wrong? I don't know, the rabbi told me I don't keep Shabbat. I don't keep Shabbat. You know, I'm very, you know me, I'm very strict about Shabbat. And I don't understand why the rabbi told me. His son all of a sudden says to him, Abba, I have to tell you something. I saw you once, just not long ago, that on Shabbat, you turn the candle on, you woke up, you want to drink water, you drank the water, and you blew the candle off. He did it while he was sleeping, he didn't notice. 
And I didn't want to tell you because after Shabbat you didn't say anything and I didn't want to say anything, but I saw you, it happened. Yeah. I said, what do you mean? The Rebbe told me I don't give Shabbat and because of that, from Shemaim, they don't give me the, the honor to respect Shabbat and accept Shabbat right away. He went back to his Rebbe, he says, Rebbe, that's the story my son told me. He saw me, candles, lighting, drinking water, extinguishing the candle. But you know, it's 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 a show gag. It's it's uh, unintentional. I didn't even notice. So the rabbi told them, "You still break Shabbat unintentionally. We break Shabbat. So what should I do? And there's nothing you can do about it." He started to cry. What do you mean, rabbi? I want to fix this thing. What do you mean? There's nothing I can do about it. He said to him, "The only way to rectify is." Next time, you have a test. From Shemaim, they'll test you. From heaven, they'll test you. If you keep Shabbat, be like a lion. Keep Shabbat. <laughs> okay, Rabbi, okay. For him, it's easy. That's what he does all his life. No big deal. So this Miller, go back home. A few weeks later, the Paritz, the landlord is coming. I said, listen, the grist mill here is going to go through a renovation. I'm putting a lot of money. You're very loyal. You're making me good money, but I'm going to make now more money. And I'm not going to work six days a week. I'm going to work seven days a week. So, uh, you know I'm not working on Shabbat. Say, yeah, no, you're the Jews. Know all the tricks and the shtick. You'll find a way to make it work on Shabbat. Ah, I'm not worried. He says, no, I, I, this, I don't work on Shabbat. He says, listen, I'm investing a lot of money. I needed to work seven days because he works, he gets percentage, right? Seven days. But remember the agreement we had before and now you are changing and no, it's a renewal. No, and the Paris, the, the landlord started to scream at him. Listen to me. I'm not going to lose money because of you. If you don't work on uh, seven days a week, out of the contract. His life was depending on it. Not something minor. He says, Shabbat, more important. So, he already notified the landlord, finito la comedia, no continuation. We're not going to continue. This guy invested a lot of money, they make it bigger, new equipment came in. So they can produce more and make more, and now it's the seventh day. The day they wanted to open, you open with someone else. All of a sudden, the door can be open. They call the locksmith. Omri David came, open the locksmith, <laughs> open the door. They want to start, it doesn't work. The belt is twisted. The horse is not ready. It's kicking. Well, the problems in two, three days, nothing but troubles. And the landlord go back home and he says to his wife, "You know, there's a, I'm losing money here. Tell me whatever." She told him this. He told her the story. He said, "You know, he was loyal to you, this guy, and now he has no job. You don't do this kind of stuff." He said, you know what, I'm going to call him back. He called him and said, listen, you won. Do it the way you like. Take the business. You want to work, the it's on you. Baruch Hashem. He went back to his rabbi. He gave him a nice maaser. He blessed the rabbi. The rabbi blessed him. And now he's in a new factory. <laughs> Making more money during the week. Without need the work of Shabbat. And this is how we did tikkun. Sometimes Hashem needs from us dedication. Which he called Mesirut Nefesh. Many times we've been pushed, but we have to measure it on the scales. Hashem's will, my will. Hashem's will, which one will win? It always works like that. Whatever I do, if it will be pleased and favor in the eyes of Hashem. That's why we need to ask ourselves all the time. Moving on to the next one. So we did Kiddush 
on wine, in the morning on wine, accidentally we don't have, we can use any other alcoholic beverage. What about Havdalah? Havdalah we can do over wine, but it's not, doesn't have the significance like Shabbat. Havdalah is very important. Can I do Havdalah of Motzei Shabbat at night over coffee or tea? Or milk? Chocolate milk? One may not recite Kiddush on Friday evening or Havdalah after Shabbat over a cup of coffee, tea, milk, or any soft drink. Non-alcoholic beverages are not included in the category of popular beverages that our sages said may be used when there is no wine available. Likewise, fruit juices and uh, carbonated uh, beverages may not be used, even if it's very, if it's very popular. Even when there is no wine or beer or other alcoholic beverages in the city, or if someone cannot drink any alcoholic beverage, he may not recite on Friday, at uh, the Friday evening, Kiddush, or Havdalah using any of the beverages mentioned above. If one does not recite Kiddush or Havdalah over such a beverage, if one does recite Kiddush or Havdalah over such a beverage, he is guilty of reciting a blessing in vain, and anyone who hears him may not respond Amen to that blessing. These beverages should not be used for the daytime Kiddush either. However, if someone cannot drink wine for health reasons, no beer is available, he is incapable of drinking Melo Lugmav, the full, full of his cheek, uh, of a strong liquor or any on, 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 uh, on an empty stomach, and no one else is available to recite Kiddush over wine for him, then it is possible to recite the daytime Kiddush over Revi'it of popular non-alcoholic beverage. He should recite the blessing She'akol Niyabit Varo for Havdalah in such a case. He should rely upon the passage of Atachon Antanas and Tefillah that he adds of, uh, to the Amidah of Arvit after Shabbat in order to fulfill his obligation or he should listen to someone else recite Havdalah with wine for him. Uh, in any case, he may not recite Havdalah over a non-alcoholic beverage. Okay. Only wine? Well, yeah, what we mentioned. And I owe you an answer about the question we asked for homework last week. Why we are insist to use red wine versus white wine. And even we saying if you have just a little bit of the red wine and much of the white wine, you can mix them, but mix the white to the red and not the red to the white. Because you want to show who is, who, is, who is important, who is the base. The base is the red. Why the red? So I got answers for some of you, they texted me. But the first one to text me an answer and to receive something, a blessing from the tomb of Rabbi Meir Baal Anes. It's in the kitchen with the tefillat aderech, the prayers of the way. The big you mazal and safekeeping, Be'ezrat Hashem, from Eretz Yisrael. Is no less than Moshe Rabbeinu. Uh, Moshe... That's all right. It was the first one. Hazaku Babu. Red wine, be careful not to spill on the table. You know, there is a story about Rabbi Akiva Eger. He's inviting people to Shabbat. Usually, people that are poor, they have no place to go on Shabbat. By the way, um, open your eyes to see who needs to be, who's, need, who's looking for a table on Shabbat, who needs to hear Kiddush. So help them, bring them to your home, invite them. It's a chesed, it's a mitzvah. So he was calling the poor people. You know, it's a Rabbi, Akiva, Rabbi Akiva Iger is the chief rabbi. Sitting by the table, a beautiful table, a lot of food. Uh, white, uh, clean and shining tablecloth. People have their own glasses with wine. So this poor guy wanted to reach to the, to the chale. On his way there, he pushed the, his own cup and it spills all over the... 
the white tablecloth. Second, second later, when everybody's looking at him, Rabbi Akiva Iger pushed his own cup, spilling his own cup. And then he says, I'm telling you guys, this is a shaky table. It's a problem here. Uh, Chippy, we have to fix the table after Shabbat. What is this? <laughs> guys, hold it. What did he do? Why Rabbi Akiva did that? Not to embarrass Not to embarrass. You see how tzaddik minds works? I wouldn't think about something like that. But Rabbi Akiva Iger was so sensitive to the people in his community, he knew how to play it right. How important it is not only to bring people to your home, but to give them the feeling that they are part of the family. Okay. So what was the answer? Oh, the answer, the answer. <laughs> I'll give you the bottom line. Compare it to the Beit HaMikdash, in the Temple Mount. They used only red wine. But the verse says, Al yain ki yit adam. When the Torah refers to wine, it's always when it's red. So our sages consider wine red. Oh, there's other kind. There's white. There's uh, pinkish colors. But wine is red. And back then, they used to have Yayin Yashan. You know what's Yayin Yashan? Huh? Yayin Yashan, the partition of today is nothing. nothing. <laughs> Yayin Yashan back then, it was so strong, very high percentage in alcohol. You would drink one cup, you would go to sleep. Wow. You couldn't help it. The time of the Talmud, the Mishnah, they're always talking about this Yayin Yashan, the old wine. Woo, it was very strong. You know, remind me a story. <laughs> he was a he was a rabbi. He was a rabbi in Poland that was about to marry his son from a bride from another city, not far away. So the day of the wedding, everybody he invited, of course, the leaders of the communities, the important rabbis, the yeshiva, and everybody with chariot going early in the day to that city to participate in the, in the wedding. And that the other city, they're waiting for them. The food, the orchestra, everything is ready. They had to stop at some point to Davin Mincha because they saw the, it's going to get dark soon. And so they want to miss the time of Mincha. So they stopped. A break, they announced a break, and they start the Filat Mincha, praying Davening Mincha. The Rebbe was Davening by himself. Into, you know, in Poland, there where they live, a lot of woods. The Rebbe is going, he's walking with himself, and the fila, he's walking and walking and wandering around. At some, some, some point he stops. He's Davening, he's the father of the groom. He's Davening, and they're waiting, they're already finished. They're waiting for him, five minutes, ten minutes. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, the guy from the show says, I know my Rebbe, it's going to take a while. The, the, today, it's a special day. He's putting more intention in the tefillah. After half an hour, says, hey, where's the Rebbe? Then, I mean, he needs to have his itubodedut. Uh, He's in a high level now. Let him, let him. After one hour, they start to call the Rebbe. There's no answer. They're looking all over. The Rebbe is not there. Someone passed by and says, you know uh, Schmeichel from the city? I saw him with his own chariot. He's going to the wedding. I think the Rebbe went with him. The Rebbe probably with him already. He took a ride with him. So, okay. So, the Rebbe didn't say anything. Okay. So, everybody continued to the city. To their surprise, the Rebbe is not there. The wedding is about to start. The Rebbe is not there. At some point, they could not wait anymore. They start the wedding. They finish the wedding. They finish everything. The Rebbe is not there. A day later, finally, the Rebbe is not there. Day two, three, four, a week. The Rebbe is gone. After a few weeks, a few weeks, the Rebbe came back. What happened was, he told them, 
he was he was um, he was wandering around and davening, and he, he he got lost. Instead of going one way, he was running because he was uh, he didn't want to lose the wedding in the other direction into the woods. He got stuck. He spent all night there. In the morning, the next morning was the first time for him to pray without the filin. And he was eating from, I don't know, uh, fruits that he found here and there. He barely survived. But he did a big mistake. It's a true story. He miscalculated the days. And he celebrated Shabbat on Friday. So Thursday night, he was doing Yo, Mashishi, it's Thursday night, skipping Shabbat. And on Shabbat, he thought it's Sunday, he's breaking Shabbat. When he came back, everybody were happy, they saw him also half, it looks, you know, he lost a lot of weight. They were happy that Baruch Hashem is alive. And on uh, Thursday morning, he thinks it's Shabbat, Friday. So he tells them, why are you not setting up the table? So what do you mean? He says, today is Shabbat. Abba, it's not Shabbat today. What do you mean? It's not Shabbat, it's Thursday. <laughs> I calculated accurately. Today is Shabbat. So Abba, no, no, today is Thursday. Come on, set up the table. And he insists. They brought their neighbors, the rabbi of the community, the kolel, everybody tried to convince him. He says, no, today is Shabbat. And he's mocking people. He's going to shul. He thinks it's Friday night. It's Thursday. He, he's, he wear the special clothing for Shabbat. And you see everybody comes with the regular clothing. He says, shame on you, you're breaking Shabbat. Everybody celebrate the very next day, for next day Shabbat. For him it's Motzei Shabbat. They go home to do Kiddu, she's doing Abdallah. Everybody keeps Shabbat and he's driving, he's lighting candles, cigars. Shabbat! They brought him rabbis from all over and he insists, today Shabbat, you all of you wrong. You miscalculated. People start to say that he was wandering in a few weeks in the, in the, wind, in, in the woods. He got, he got crazy. What's going on here? Shabbat after Shabbat, everybody keeps Shabbat. The Rebbe breaks Shabbat. <laughs> so, they called the Rebbe of Yanov. They call, so they called Rabbi Shmolker. Rabbi Shmolker. The Rebbe I was talking about was the Rebbe of Yanov. That's the name of the city. A guy came to the city here, his name was Reb Schmolker from Nicholsburg. And they, uh, he was in the show and he saw that the Rebbe says, what's up with this guy? Don't even ask, don't even ask. We're trying for months to tell him it's not Shabbat. He's mocking everybody. He breaks Shabbat and he miscalculated when he was in the woods. I said, no way. Let me take care of it. What do you mean? So, he told them, uh, I'm going to do something. You have to, you have to, you, all of you have to follow my, my, my lead. He says, listen, today is Thursday evening. He thinks, on his calculations, Shabbat. I need everybody from the city to come Friday night to the synagogue, dress up like for Shabbat. And we're going to act it Shabbat. But Father, as a rabbi, the tefillot is different. Don't worry about it. Okay, so they're playing long. Thursday night. Before, a little before that, he calculates Shabbat. Oh, Shalom Aleichem, Aleichem Sholem, how are you? I didn't see you for a long time. Would you stay here for Shabbat with me? Of course. Uh, Shabbat is in a few hours. No. Oh, so you also agree Shabbat is now? Yes, of course. <laughs> They, um, so he told them, these guys in your city, they, they got crazy. They miscalculated it. Oh, finally, one guy, one guy, he kissed them, he hugged them. You're staying all Shabbat with me. Okay. They go to Shabbat, to the Kiddush, uh, to the Tefillah. Everybody dressed up, everybody looking at each other. It's Thursday night, they're acting like it's Shabbat. 
They can't drive. They can't come with the donkeys or the horses. They have to play it. And uh, they finish. Mincha, Mincha is regular Mincha. And then he, he called the rabbi Mikrosim with the guest. He says, come on, you should lead the service. He said, no, no, I'm tired. I'm tired from the road. Maybe the rabbi. I came to hear the rabbi. So the rabbi is going there. Everybody is praying, you know, praying. Regular Arvit. And come to singing and they're participating in singing. After, Shab- after they finish the, the Rasha, it's Thursday night, they go home, the Rebbe have the whole table, the whole family is there. And then he told them already in advance, bring Yain Yashan. <laughs> What's Yain Yashan? The strong wine. <laughs> they gave him Yain Yashan, they talk in the Torah, and they... It's Thursday night, he thinks Shabbat, Shalom Aleichem Aleichem Hiduk Hidush. And then his friend, um, the Rabbi from Klonsenburg says, you know, it's a special day, it's Shabbat, it's singing, coming from far away. You should have a dream, you should have a simcha. Yeah, of course. And he make him drink and drink and drink. After the fourth cup, the Rabbi started to do. <laughs> Fell asleep. Immediately they brought a pillow, put a pillow here, fix him like he feel comfortable. He made sure he will drink a lot. The Rebbe is not used to drink a lot. If you drink a little bit from this wine, it's going to knock you up for, for long hours. And the Rebbe is sleepy. They cleared the area, they left the table as is. He said, don't touch anything. It's Thursday. In the morning, the Rebbe, he's in another world. Morning, noontime, he's there watching the, the rabbi that he won't wake up. He didn't go to shul, he's putting tefillin next to him. He want to make sure if he wakes up, I'm going to give him more to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Evening come, they went, everybody went to the tefillah, he stayed there. It's almost 24 hours. The rabbi, nah. And then, they're sitting around the table, everybody back to his seats. And then all of a sudden they start to make a lot of noise. Oh, Shabbat! And the Rebbe, shh, what's going on? The Rebbe wakes up. He says, Rebbe, Rebbe, you were sleeping for, you know, maybe, I don't know, long minutes, very long minutes, Rabbi. Ah, oh, what, what did you give me? What he says, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Now it's Shabbat. And listen to this. Till he died, he never knew they tricked him. He thought that eventually the whole city did the Shuvah. <laughs> everybody repent and everybody agreed to his calculation to his curriculum and they kept Shabbat according to he was so happy on that day he loved everybody that agreed with him they were they were willing to break their Shabbat for, in order to believe it was amazing see how the power of wine can, can be sometimes used in the, in the right uh, right manner can fix things anyways it fixes the calendar. It fixes the calendar, exactly. You know, Yain plays a very uh, significant role in many cultures. People do Lechaim, Salud, whatever, before they sign contract of the in a special occasion. It's for a reason. Who is the first one to do mistake with wine? No. No. So wine can be can lead to a devastating situation. Wine is a because the wine led to a curse. He cursed Canaan, his own grandson, to be doomed to die. In order to rectify, we saying lechaim. What's chaim? To life. To fix. Huh? What's Chava? Kava Eve. What is it? She's, he's asking about what about Kava. Oh, he's asking about Adam. Yeah, what about her? She gave to him the wine, something like that. They all, they all pay a price. The snake says, the snake got cursed. Chava says it's the snake fault. Adam says it's Eve fault. Uh, everybody got punished. 
But the worst curse is the snake. The worst. Yeah. Right. Let me, can, let me conclude this class with two more halachot. Now, what I, what's the situation if someone has wine, beautiful wine, good wine? Wine is not the problem. The problem is that he has no bread. No challah. I was in a situation, another situation. I was invited to someone's house. They had bread, but it was in the freezer. The wife thought she put it out. He came back from shul. It's still in the freezer. What are you going to do? So, if someone has neither wine nor bread with which to recite Kiddush on Friday evening, he may not recite Kiddush over a cake. If he plans to eat at least 7 ounces or 260 grams of the cake, which is considered making an entire meal uh, of it according to the halakha, there is a basis to rely upon to recite Kiddush over the cake. So you can substitute with the cake, but you have to eat at least 7 ounces, 260 grams, which is not a lot. You know what? I don't know. Give me, give me one muffin. Let's weigh it. We're going to test. Here in this house, we're checking on the spot, live. We don't uh, play games. What do you say, guys? There's 260 grams here? I can do Kiddush. Over it, it doesn't matter. I'm saying, I'm saying there is, no. there is seven ounces. I believe that there is more than two hundred and sixty grams. That's just my my will, my feelings. I don't know. I never tried it. Twenty-seven. Well, let's see. Two sixty-five. You see? Two sixty-five. Two sixty-five. Huh? Two more. One month, one month. 265, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but 265 for the muffin. So you can have a weight <laughs> dose of the muffin? You can take it now. So, if we have this minimum amount of two, the muffin is 265, you can say, you have no hala, use this, and say mezonot instead. Amotzi lechem inaret, you say, bore mine mezonot. Comprende? Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. Question, yes? As long as it's not cut, it should be whole. It should be whole. In case you have two pieces that are cut, you can put uh, the stick, what do you call the, the toothpick? Okay. Toothpick in between, put them together, or at least hold them together. In case you have one chala and one frozen, what do you do? You can use the, you, you, you use the One chala, that's homework. Homework. Two halot needed for Shabbat. One, it's frozen. What should I do? You know, if I wait, it might take. It might take. I don't know, thirty minutes, forty minutes. We don't want to wait. You have to do it quickly. That's your homework. Frozen challah can be used for uh, beracha. The beracha, right? The beracha needs to be over something you can eat. You don't eat. Nobody eats frozen bread. So, but we is it possible to put them together and say oh, yes or no? Give me an answer. The first one, Bezrat Hashem, will get to me used t No, it was good. <laughs> I get a prize. No, <laughs> Oh, someone asked me the other day another question. I remember this. Rabbi, every time I drink wine, I say bracha. I say bracha. What do you say? Now I see people, they drinking on Shabbat table, they don't say any bracha. I ask them, what do you want them to do? What do you want them to say? I should say bracha. What do you would answer him? You see it all the time. People drinking on Shabbat meal, wine, it's on the table, they're drinking, they don't say any bracha. 
I'm not talking about the tova amitiv now. Bracha over the wine. Are they exempt from the bracha? No one is exempt from any bracha unless there is a reason to exempt them. They were listening before. Listening to what? Okay, if I listen to the Kiddush, that exempt me from drinking, uh, from uh, saying bracha, or I have not only to listen, but I have to drink from the one. Is that considered a full mitzvah just by listening no. and saying amen, or I have to take a sip? Take a sip. If I didn't? No, it's not complete. Okay, okay, you're saying something interesting. Answer. Uh, no, five minutes. After one recite the blessing of Borep Yagafen over wine, it will not be necessary to recite the blessing again if one wishes to drink wine during the meal. However, this is only true if this person at least occasionally drinks wine during his meal. If he almost, oh, I think I skipped something. The answer is you must take a sip. If you didn't take a sip, you need to say a Gefen. If you hear Bore, Priya Gefen, Amen, and then they're passing wine, or you have next to you, you drink, you go. You don't have to say Bracha over the wine. Yeah. Now, it could be a, uh, okay, so that's another case now. After reciting the blessing of Bore, Priya Gefen, wine, it will not be necessary to recite the blessing again if one wishes to drink wine during the meal. Is that clear so far? Good. Yeah. Yeah. But it's only good for certain people. Which people? People that usually or occasionally drinks wine. If someone never drinks, I don't really, really drink wine every blue moon, I don't have a special occasion. Even if he said amen, he participated in the Kiddush, he will need to say special bracha because for him it's not something usual not to drink. However, it is only true to, uh, if this person at least occasionally drinks wine during his meal. If he almost never drinks wine during the meal, then although he, believe me, this halacha many people don't know. I repeat, you can see it later on YouTube. I repeat, many people don't know. You will ask, even rabbis, certain rabbis, they will not know the answer. Guarantee you. If this person, he almost never drinks wine during the meal, then although he drank from the wine of the Kiddush, he did everything on the book. He said amen, he listened to the Baruch Geffen, he drank from the wine, he took a sip, everything is good. Now he wants to take another wine to drink, he needs to say Baruch Geffen, because for him, it's special occasion, he never drinks wine. I don't say never, but very rare, it's rare. Rarely he drinks. Kiddush, he will need to recite the blessing of Bore Priya Geffen again if he decides to drink wine during this meal. In any case, it will not be necessary to recite the after blessing over the wine. It automatically covered with the Birkat Amazon recited after the meal. This is so whether or not one uses a cup of wine to accompany uh, uh, the reciting of Birkat Amazon. It doesn't matter. Let me just conclude this siman, and this is the last halacha for today. Next week we will only we're going to talk about kiddush at the location of the meal. Some people here in the Bet Knesset and think they're exempt. Or maybe yes, maybe no. Some do to the neighbor, to elderly guy in the building, and he goes down. I did already kiddush. I can't do kiddush. Venture to here. We're going to put this together and answer all these questions. If someone hosts a kiddush in the synagogue. For the benefit of the congregation on Shabbat morning, it happens all the time, right? And after Kiddush, everyone takes a sip from the wine and proceeds to eat, proceeds to eat cake or other food. They do not need to recite the blessing of Shakon Niya Bidvaro over the beverage that they drink. There is arak there, aranis, whiskey, soda. No, you heard Kiddush in the Bet Knesset. You took a sip, you exempt. Drink everything you want. No bracha needed. The blessing of Borep Geffen covers all the beverages automatically for anyone who sips from the wine. Not only for the one who recited the Kiddush. Meaning, if you didn't take a sip, you must say the brachot. You're only exempt if you participated in drinking as well. 
Anyone who did not sip the wine at all, however, must recite the blessing of Shakon Yavdaro over any beverage he might drink, even though he fulfilled the mitzvah of Kiddush by listening to the blessing of Rebbe Geffen. Bottom line, this is uh, contrary to the ruling of Harav Yitzchak Zev Soloveitchik. Uh, this rule applies to Ashkenazic Jews as well. Any questions? Yes. Regarding uh, people that are not drinking wine uh, often or rare, do they need to bless Shechiano? No. They don't say Shechiano over uh, drinking from wine unless it's a special occasion like a holiday. I think we have videos, few videos of the topic Sheikh Yano. Did you ever hear about the word, the Sheikh Yano blessing? Yeah. If you get something new, you buy new clothing, a new car, you have uh, something that you're happy with, you buy a new table. There's a bracha we call Sheikh Yano, like we did on Hanukkah. Sheikh Yano, veki emanu, vihigiyanu lazmanaze. It's not only on Hanukkah. Anything that makes you happy that you buy, a new shoes. You buy, it's a Sheikh Yano. As I say, new car, a new home. If you marry a new wife, you say Sheikh Yano? <laughs> <laughs> it's a question in the halakha. <laughs> Should we put it for homework? No. <laughs> <laughs> the question is actually, why we don't say Sheikh Yano when you marry? There's another Sheikh Yano there, but you don't have any. Yeah. Ah, this yeah. is a topic I would leave, we would no? study it uh, two or three classes with all the opinion that I'm bound. When you learn the rules of Sheikh Yano, you know that you don't say Sheikh Yano on the wedding as a khatam, but you take the bride will buy all those that Bez Hashem will finish the conversion soon and get married. You buy him stuff, he buy you stuff. One of the stuff you buy him is the talit. So the, over the talit. And some books. Anyways, he said Talit, and he said Bracha, Sheikh Yano Talit, to cover a lot of stuff. Uh, but when we get to it, Bezrat Hashem, for this happy day, we will teach you everything you need to know. Any questions? Again, uh, I just want to make it clear. Yes. When we hear the Bracha, we can drink the. Uh, we did not take a sip. And because we will still uh, do the blessing for drinking the. You have to! Because I don't think you can only exempt if you took a sip. Uh, but if you didn't, you must say bracha. Okay. Um, any more questions? I want to thank everybody that's supporting Ohio Israel Foundation. Thank you very much. With your support, we can continue to teach Torah and help families in need. God bless you. Your parnasa will be easy. Your parnasa will come to you quickly. And as much as you have an abundance, you have a shefa of bracha, v'atzlacha, and shalom bayit, and everything that you need, and good health to the entire family. Amen. On behalf of Ohevis, amen, on behalf of Ohevis Israel Foundation, I want to thank you. I want to thank those who set up the table here. Um, I don't know if next week, uh, hopefully, Bezash and my wife will be here, so that Abanil will set it up. If anybody wants to help out and volunteer, please let me know. On behalf of Ohio Israel Foundation, I want to thank you. We'll see you next week, same time, same place. God bless you all. Amen. 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 Thank you. How about the Mosque? What do you want to say? Is there anything you want to add to that? <laughs>